Welcome to Kevin Richards VIPs. Today's guest is an amazing young man with incredible drive and compassion, especially at his young age. My guest today is Zach Hoffer. Hi. So I'm sitting at X Play, an amazing south end of Barrie here with my new friend Zach Hoffer. Zach is from Zach's Makes Tracks, but I'm going to let Zach tell you a lot more about Zach. Thank you for being on my show today, mm -hmm. Zach. I've been looking forward to talking to you. Thank you. You are an exciting kid, and you don't even, I think you know that you're exciting, but you don't want people to know you're exciting, which I think is really even more exciting, mm -hmm. right? So, Zach, let's get to know you a little bit. You're a 13-year-old boy mm -hmm. with all this incredible drive and ambition, and you're a superstar here in town, mm -hmm. but you're super shy, which is going to make this interview a lot of fun, mm -hmm. right? So. Let's just start off with some of the basics. It's not like I have to go back very far. Mm -hmm. Tell me a bit about you growing up. Where are you from? Uh, well, I was born in Toronto, mm -hmm. but um, I've been from, I've lived in Barrie most of my whole life. Well, Barrie and Collingwood, because that's where my dad lives. Okay. Um, yeah. But Barrie's cooler. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you go to school on the East End. I don't need to know which school, but you uh, go on the East End. You, yeah. And you live in the East End. Yeah. Good community. Yep. All right. And so. We can cut right into this a little bit here. Tell me a little bit about what happened. You had this inspiration. Were you watching TV? What was it that made you think, I want to help people? And we'll get to who you were helping. But what inspired you? Was it your mom? Was it your dad? Um, well, there's a few kids in my school that um, suffer from uh, mental illness. So, and a few and a people in my family. Okay. So, yeah, that's mostly why. Okay. So these kids inspired you to just to run like I'm trying to put that together at what point do you go I know how to help them I'm uh, gonna run well you like to run obviously yeah I thought of um, Terry Fox yeah and Annalise Carr oh yeah yeah um, how they both did something active like run and uh, swim mm -hmm. so I thought I could run bike and scooter um, I chose biking mostly and running just a bit yeah like I walked through Peterborough and um, halfway through Ottawa it's then, a lot of lot of lot of distance. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's back this up a little bit. So, how long have you been running for? What got you into running? Um, I don't really know. I just started running, I guess, because um, our school has a cross country team. Mm -hmm. So I guess I just started to um, run. With, I started. I signed up for that in grade four. Mm -hmm. And um, well, this is a kind of a weird story, but um, like when I used to go to Trillium Woods. Yeah. Um, Riley, my cousin, he always was really fat, was faster than me, and he'd always chase me around with like his, his like a Nerf sword or something. Yeah. So I guess he kind of got me to run faster. <laughs> That's always good. It's like having a big dog chasing you, right? Yeah. You only have to run faster than the dog. Mm -hmm. So, what was it then that you decided that it was going to be running and cycling? Was it your mom that helped you kind of put uh, it together? Yeah, because uh, she didn't. She didn't want me to hurt all different types because if I'm running, I could hurt one that one same muscle the whole time. Yeah. So if you're alternating, you don't hurt all that one muscle. Yep. Now, have you ever had any muscle injuries? You ever had any sprains or? Um, well, I bruised my kidneys falling out of a tree, but. That's a good kid story. What happened there? Um, well, me and my friend were climbing trees in the winter. Yeah. And um, I got stuck, and uh, my friend told me to jump. So um, I said no because I'm going to catch my hood on this one branch. <laughs> So and I jumped and I caught my hood on that branch and then I landed on my back. Oh, well, sort of funny when you look back at it now, yeah. but not so funny you know, mm -hmm. back then. So you've, you've only been injured doing that. How did you train for this? Like, um, I want to get into the fundraising well, and stuff later on. I want to know how you trained for I it. I trained with uh, mind to muscle. How, I don't know, how many times a week? Uh, twice a week. Yeah. Yeah. They're a good crew over at Mind to Muscle. Mm -hmm. They know what they're doing. Yeah. So they actually Mind to Muscle. They help some of the NHL and OHL guys yeah. do all their stuff too. Mm -hmm. So what sort of things are we doing for training? Um, well, they have this like cycle there. Um, I forget what it's called, but like first you do like three laps, and then um, you do like uh, lunges mm -hmm. and a bunch of stuff like that. So circuit training. Yeah. Okay. And what was your favorite thing to do circuit training? Um, Probably just the laps. They're the easiest one to do. Yeah, and what did you hate the most? Um, probably, uh, I actually don't know. Did they make you do burpees? I don't think so. I don't no? think I ever did burpees there. Do you know what burpees are? Burpees are yeah. when you jump up and then land and go flat and then jump back up. Most people yeah. hate them in CrossFit. I don't like them either. <laughs> yesterday, yesterday at school we did the beep test. Which is that? Um, so you have, our gym's pretty small so it wasn't as hard as other gyms would be. So. Um, you have to run to the other side of the gym 
before the next beep. So it goes to like it goes up levels. Oh, cool. So that like um, there'd be like I'm pretty sure the highest level is like level 30 or something. Yeah. And you keep going, and then once it beeps and you don't make it, you're out. Yep. Yeah. So you're probably pretty good at hustling like that, though. Yeah. Yeah. So how long did it take you to train to do what you were gonna do? Um, we were training about two months. Two months. Yeah. Since January. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So when you decided you were going to do this, again, I'm going to go back to this now. I'm going to sort of unpack this whole idea of some people want to do fundraising, but they never really come up with how they're going to do it. Mm -hmm. What was it? Did you talk to your mom and say, hey, mom, I'm inspired to do this? Or how do we make this happen? Um, yeah, I told my, I was trying to convince my mom for three years because she kept saying no. Um, I, I kind of came up with the idea of running. Yeah. But my first idea was to run across Canada. But wow. um, she said no to that, so we compromised from uh, Barrie to Ottawa. That's but still a pretty good compromise. That's still a good hike. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So then continue on with that. So then tell me what your, you had a conversation with your mom. Uh, yeah, I had a conver we had a conversation about um, how we would do it and if people would listen or anything. And the way that she actually said yes was through a teacher. She went to a teacher to ask her how to um, crush my dreams. Is, this is her words. How to um, crush my dreams, and then the teacher, the teacher said, "Why would you wa not want him not to do that?" So then the teacher said, "Yeah." The teacher said to let him do it. So then she said to let me. Well, there's a big thumbs up for a teacher box right mm -hmm. there, right? Yeah. For sure, big like on that. Mm -hmm. So who's this teacher that got you inspired? Tell me who the teacher was. Uh, Miss Redmond. Miss Redmond, and she mm -hmm. was there at Trillium Woods. Uh, no, she was at Codrington. At Codrington. All yeah. right. Well, cool. Good for her. So mm -hmm. that's exciting. So, so you must really like her. Yeah. All right. So you sit down, and now you've got a pen and paper maybe with your mom, and you're talking about fundraising. Mm -hmm. What was it that you suddenly said, okay, here's the charity. You've already chosen mental illness, right? Yeah. Which is a pretty wide spectrum. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty wide spectrum for sure, yeah. right? And a lot of people don't want to talk about it. There's mm -hmm. a big stigma. You know what yeah. stigma is, right? Obviously, you probably heard that from a mm -hmm. lot of this. Is There's a big stigma about mental disability or mental illness. Yeah. and you know, the double diagnosis and uh, autism and all these incredible spectrum of people who can benefit from that mm -hmm. kind of help. Yeah. So kudos to you for helping. Thanks. But so now you, you've got this huge idea. You sit down and you start to plan. Mm -hmm. Who's doing the planning with you? Your mom? Uh, yeah. Okay. So when you're doing this with your mom, you got a pad of paper and a pen and you're just saying um, Ottawa. Well, uh, we also had um, a lady, Sylvia Stark. Sylvia Stark. She helped us with like getting opportunities and stuff. Like she got me. Um, There's as we were biking down a street. I saw this like I love the bouncy castles. So we saw this <laughs> Who one. Doesn't? I saw this one uh, giant alligator bouncy castle. It was like an alligator reptile zoo. And as I was going by, we had microphones. Like uh, my grandpa who was driving. Yeah. Um, had one in the RV. The police officer that was behind us and Derek and yeah. I. And um, I gave everybody nicknames. So. Um, I was saying on the microphone that I wanted to go there, so uh, Sylvia helped make it happen. So that's fun. Yeah. <laughs> so when you when you and your mom are planning, what did you work out? What kind of crew did you need? Did you write all these sort of things um, down? Not really. We kind of just played it by year. You're just gonna wing it. And sponsors. Okay. So then let's let's give a shout out to some of your sponsors. And who are some of the people who sponsored you that you remember? Um, the biggest sponsor was probably the Hitch House. Oh, great spot. Uh, they donated us a big RV yeah. that they allowed us to wrap. Like, first we went there, me and my mom went there. Um, but, like, so we called them um, the day before they actually let they, yeah. we came. Yeah. Um, so when we went there, we were, trying, we were seeing if we could have like an old RV that was in the back, but they actually ordered us a brand new RV. Cool. Yeah. That's a fun way to travel. Mm -hmm. So the Hitch House, first of all, they're a great group of people. Yeah. They've been around a long time. Mm -hmm. and they've had their, their ups and downs too. They've experienced a fire and all kinds of stuff, yeah. right? So they're all about resilience and regrouping. Mm -hmm. So that's nice of them to help you out. Who else gave you a hand? Uh, mind to Muscle. Yeah. So you, you had a company that helped you get a bunch of clothing, and who was that? Uh, Syncor. Okay. And what did they do for you? Um, they brought us like a bunch. They brought us a bunch of clothing. Okay. Like mm -hmm. what? Like t-shirts, Zach's uh, uh, T-shirts, pants, shorts, uh, jackets. Yeah? Yeah. So when you sat down with your mom in a notepad and decided to do this, who came up with Zach's Makes Tracks? Um, actually, my stepdad came up with the name. Cool. Yeah, um, I came up with like the running part, and my mom was like doing all the social media and stuff. 
Did you talk to the running room? They should have given you some shoes. Uh, um, <laughs> Asics actually gave yeah. us some shoes. Yeah, I and, heard that. And um, Adidas. Yeah. They gave us a get like a thousand dollar gift card to go shopping at their at one of their head stores in Toronto. Cool. That's yeah. very cool. Because mm -hmm. you're gonna go through some shoes. Yeah. Now. So it comes around to the day now, you've got sponsors, you've got people doing fundraising. The first day happens. Have you raised much money yet before you even hit the, hit the, hit the road? Or um, how did it go? We raised $10,000 before we actually started, and that was my original goal. And by the end, we raised um, about 104000 That's amazing. Yeah. I'm really proud of you for that. So, and so is the whole community, for sure. So you're standing there at this starting line. Where did you start? Where did you um, choose to start? We started at RVH down in Barrie. Okay. Um, and we went from September 10th to August 13th, and we ended in Parliament Hill. You went from when to when? Um, we went from September 10th to August 13th. Okay. So now how did that go? So you're standing there at this start line, you're like, okay, I'm going to start running, and you just ran. Um, well, at the launch day, uh, we had a bunch of people walk with us for like five kilometers. Okay. And then once um, the five kilometers was out, me and my stepdad and one of my friends hopped on our bike yep. and started biking. Cool. So when most people were out of breath after 5K, you started to keep going. Yeah. That's pretty cool. So what was the route? How did you go? Um, I actually don't know. Do you remember some of the cities you hit? I remember Peterborough. Yeah. Because um, in Peterborough, I walked with my brother who goes to college there. Yeah. And that was probably my favorite part of the whole trip. No. Okay, cool. So what was it like to see him there? Um, it was pretty cool. Yeah, it's a pretty yeah. town? Mm-hmm. Okay. So then tell me what, what it's like on the road then for that amount of time. What's it like? You're, how long are you going for each day? Uh, we normally bike for about an hour a day, so about 25 kilometers a day. Yep. And I think that's good because if you did the whole trip in like four or five days or whatever, mm -hmm. it's all over and the fundraising's yeah. over, the longer you kind of stretch it out, mm -hmm. the more people can come out yeah. and support you and do that, right? Mm -hmm. So. What did you do at night? Did you find it was kind of tiring? Did you hang out in this cool RV? Uh, yeah, we stopped at a bunch of campgrounds and my grandparents actually came with us for most of the way. Yeah. So um, I got to hang out with them and my grandpa, he's a, he, he can cook, he's a really good cook. Yeah. So we always had like steak for dinner and bacon for breakfast and stuff. Bacon, what a great thing to have before mm -hmm. you go on a run. Yeah. <laughs> so when you finally start to get towards Ottawa and you're realizing that this is a very successful thing, mm -hmm. What's going through your head? Are you thinking about the people that have helped you, or are you more thinking about just finishing and then just trying to just, you know, maybe get home after? What um, are you thinking? Kind of both, I guess. Yeah. yeah. It's exhausting. I was happy to finish, but I was um, also pretty happy, happy that I was able to help a lot of people. Yeah. So when you get to Ottawa, who's waiting for you in Ottawa? Um, well, there's a bunch of people there, yeah. and um, my stepdad's daughter brought me a Big Mac to eat at the end from McDonald's. Um, what a great food. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so when you finally get to the finish line and you're eating your Big Mac, I heard you met somebody important. Oh, yeah. I met Justin Trudeau. Yeah. Now, tell me about that. What was that like? Um, well, that was a day after okay. uh, we finished. We went up to his office for like five minutes. Yeah. And he's just tall. He's very tall. Yeah. Yeah. I've met him a few times. He is mm -hmm. a very tall man. Yeah. Now, when you're talking to him, did you feel kind of like amazed or did you just kind of be like, hi, how's it going? I felt pretty grateful to be able to talk to him and amazed. Yeah. Well, I saw some of that interview. Mm -hmm. I saw some of that meeting and I think he was pretty amazed with you. Mm -hmm. So as much as you think you're amazed by him, I think he was pretty amazed just going, hey, this kid's mm -hmm. awesome. So you got a prime minister who you got his attention, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And so not only did you get his attention, you got the community's attention mm -hmm. and you got all kinds of people who are going to benefit from all this fundraising, right? All these mm -hmm. people with all these un unfortunate illnesses and, and struggles, mm -hmm. right? But the funny thing is, is you don't like attention. No. No. And that's so funny. So let's sort of unpack that a little bit too, because you're saying that you don't like attention and some people would do this completely for attention, mm -hmm. right? That's just what some people do. Terry Fox never did it for attention other than for awareness for a cause, mm -hmm. right? And that's why you did it. Mm -hmm. So what's it like now? You've done this, you're home, you're going to school. A lot of people in the community know who you are. How do you mm -hmm. handle that? Um, I actually don't really know. I just kind of, well, my mom always, tell, my mom always tells me to just smile. So that's what I try Smile to do. Smile and wave, mm -hmm. like the penguins from Madagascar. Yeah. Just smile and wave, boys. Mm -hmm. So you're you're doing this smile and wave thing, but what's it like now? Because you know you did this. You, you know your mom's super proud of you, your dad's super proud mm -hmm. of you, your family, the community. 
but what's it like now for you at school? Do you have people who um, wanted to meet you, or at, do you have friends who suddenly? Uh, at school, is kind of the same as it always been, which I'm happy about. Because it's not really any different at Good. school. Yeah. Good. So you don't get stressed out about it. No. All right. Now, is there anything that really stresses you out about the whole thing? What What has stressed you out about the whole thing since it happened? Because sometimes um, people have a bad moment. Probably mostly like public speaking and interviews and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I'm not stressing you out though, eh? No. I'm pretty easy to get along with. Mm -hmm. Especially when we're at X-Play. Yeah. Right? Which I'm sure you're going to go and take advantage of when we're finished because yeah. we're not going to jump up and down and talk. Mm -hmm. no. So what's it like for a day for you now? What's it like for you after, not on a, you know, on, on a Zach's Makes Track sort of day, what's it like for you? What are some of the favorite things you like to do? Well, I like sleeping in. And you like sleeping in? Yeah. <laughs> um, I actually never, like, it's a, normally it's normal still, like it's how we used to do it before, which I really like. It's not really any different, except for like a couple of times when I walk to school, some people see me, and that's pretty cool. Yeah. So what do you like to do in your Zach time? Do you like Minecraft um, like other kids? Or well, I normally, games? I got a new game, like NBA 2K18. Yeah. And I normally play on that for a bit. Or um, I like trampolining and basketball and stuff. So, so good athletic stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when you think about what you've done here, do you think you'd ever want to do it on a bigger scale? Maybe do it again, maybe across Canada? Do that whole thing um, that you thought of your well, original vision? On the way back from Ottawa, I was coming up with names for another one, like Zach Makes Track 2, Zach's Back on Track, and oh, stuff like, like that. that. Um, I don't really have an idea yet, but um, me and my mom are kind of planning one. So it's kind of Zach to be continued, right? Yeah. Now. I love that. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. I can't wait to see what you do. Yeah. So in your world right now, though, what is it that you would really like to do in maybe when you get older or do you have a, a goal in mind maybe when you get um, older? What would you like to well, do? Well, right now I'd really like to meet Ellen. You'd like to meet Ellen? Yeah, I've seen, I watch a lot of her shows on YouTube and stuff and on TV. She's pretty cool. Yeah, she's very funny too. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know her, but maybe somebody can somehow watch this show and say, hey, you should see this really <laughs> cool kid, Zach. Yeah. But how, so, we're okay, so you said that you're shy. I'm going to, I'm going to call you on that a little bit. Because look, you're sitting here being interviewed by Kevin from Barry, mm -hmm. all right, on Rogers, mm -hmm. all right? Clearly not Ellen, mm -hmm. all right, not even close. But how, how are you going to handle going on Ellen? Um, I don't know. Well, I just saw because I've seen a bunch of shy people on there before. Yeah. And she's kind of funny, so I think it would just kind of make me forget about all the cameras and stuff. All right. Mm -hmm. What would you want to ask Ellen if you were on the Ellen show? Um, I don't really know. You don't know? What no. do you think she would ask you? Uh, I don't know. The same sort of things? Yeah. Yeah? <laughs> so, well, Ellen's pretty cool. That's a big show. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can get there, and I hope you do. So, when you're doing your own thing then, later on career-wise, have you ever thought about, because you're pretty close to high school, mm -hmm. right? What grade are you in now? I'm um, grade eight. Yeah, so now you're starting to make choices, mm -hmm. right? What do you want to do when you get into high school and later um, on? What, what do you, would you always want to do? Well, I've always, I kind of wanted to be a pediatrician. Yeah? Uh, yeah, and actually when I was like little, like when I was eight, I wanted to be a mouse. Like, to be a mouse? I wanted to grow up to be a mouse because I like, I like the idea of crawling to little spaces and stuff. When I was like six to eight, I always wanted to be a mouse. Like Stuart Little? Yeah. Very nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. But that, that goes to say a lot about you just and your shyness and just wanting to get into your little spaces and mm -hmm. have your own space, yeah. right? So that's cool that you want to be a pediatrician because, again, mm -hmm. You're such a good kid mm -hmm. that I can't even say a young a kid. You're a young man now, right? Mm -hmm. So you're not shaven yet, but you're no. like a young man. So you've got this incredible ambition to help people. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people could benefit from you, not just even from Zach's Makes Tracks, but maybe one day you're going to be helping, you know, the local people or the planet as a pediatrician, mm -hmm. right? So if you were to take something that you learned from this run, all right, and not to get all like super big of a question and make it more than it is, but mm -hmm. when you were coming back and you were thinking about what you were going to do next, what do you think the best message is that you learned or that you could share with everybody? Um, that speaking out if anything happens is probably the best way to go. In what way? Um, well, like if you are having like depression or any mental illness, uh, speaking out like when you first realize, like don't keep it in until you're older. Because if you're younger and you realize that you have it and you speak out, you can, you can get it fixed get it fixed, and you can have a better life in the yeah, future. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what else do you think you learned from it? Um, Definitely speaking out, but what else? Uh, public speaking is hard. 
you learned public speaking is hard. Yeah, I don't like I because at the start I thought that the running was going to be the hard part, like the hardest part, because it was really hard, but um, public speaking was the worst. Do you want to know a funny fact is there is a statistic that the top two things people are scared of in life, mm -hmm. is dying and public speaking. Mm -hmm. It's scary for some people. Mm -hmm. I'm not shy, obviously. But mm -hmm. it, you will come out of your shell at certain moments. Mm -hmm. I've noticed even talking to you that you have moments that when you're excited about something, it's fun, mm -hmm. for sure, right? Yeah. So what else have you learned? Give me one more thing that you've learned um, that maybe is to the benefit of the charities or to the benefit of um, you. What have you learned as a life lesson? Other than eating a Big Mac and wanting to sleep in, what uh, was the first thing you wanted to do when you got back then? Uh, that I, when I got back, I was probably hang out with all my friends when I got back. Yeah, your happy place. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, do all your friends come here? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I've come here with a bunch of my friends. Now, this place is pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite thing to do here? Um, I, my favorite thing is probably to go over to the foam pit. The foam pit? Yeah. And so it's just a big pit of foam. Yeah. But what do you do? Just um, jump around in it? Well, the one that's back there, it has two trampolines that you can do flips off of. Yeah. And then there's these two here. So you like to live a little bit on the edge, doing some crazy fun, edgy things. Sort of. Right? Would you ever go bungee jumping? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Would you skydive? No. I would no. not skydive. Jumping no. out of a perfectly good airplane? No. <laughs> so what would you like to do in life? What is there something that you've always wanted to do? What's a Zach bucket list? I don't really know. Any place you've always wanted to go in the world? Well, there's a few trampoline places in the States that have really cool trampolines yeah. that are really bouncy. Yeah. So probably a place like that. Is there any place in the world you've always wanted to go? Um, I want to go to Dubai. For, cause, Dubai? Um, my favorite car is a Bugatti Veyron. The fastest car in the world. Yeah, and they have police car Bugatti Veyron, so I kind of want to go there to see what they look like. They stuff. need them, because some of the cars that they make over there, like mm -hmm. they take Lamborghinis and modify them, so mm -hmm. you yeah. need that Veyron. That's pretty cool. That's my mm -hmm. son's favorite car, too. Mm -hmm. So. If you could do anything else for the city of Barrie and for mental awareness, what would be your message to help people be more aware? How do you think people can, can learn about it other than Zach's Makes Tracks? What's a favorite resource? Um, well, you could, ah, I don't know. Do you think people can reach the CMHA pretty easy? That's the Canadian Mental Health Association? Yeah. Yeah. Now, how can people learn more about you? Do you have a website? Uh, yeah, zachmakestracks.ca. Okay, and what about Facebook page? You got some good social we media? Have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Now, how do you think most people found out about you? Do you think it was through social media, or do you think it was from uh, you know some previous interviews? I don't really know, actually. Yeah, so how do you think people are still handling this right now? Do you think people are still donating? Are you still getting some donations? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So you only expected to raise $10,000. Yeah. All right. So, and you got to how much? 104000 Yeah. How does that make you feel? Uh, it makes me feel pretty grateful. Yeah? Yeah. How do you think all the people who are going to benefit from it feel? Um, pretty good, I think. Yeah. Now, what sort of stuff do you think that money buys? Um, well, it got us um, an RVH in Barrie. Uh, we didn't have an inpatient unit for youth mental health. Mm -hmm. So kids would be being like sent to Toronto or Ottawa and being put into an adult. Um, uh, mental health thing. Mm -hmm. So um, the money helped to go to the RVH's youth mental health program, where there's like there, I'm pretty sure there's eight inpatient beds and um, a day a day thing where you can go there for the day. Wow. Mm -hmm. What happens to that day thing? Do you know? Uh, no, I don't. Well, they have a, all. My favorite part is that they have this giant hallway yeah. that they play nurse soccer in. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it better be a nurse soccer in a hospital, right? Yeah. I kick real soccer balls around. So that's pretty cool. So now mm -hmm. there's an actual physical thing, right? Yeah. So it's not just getting people aware and everybody trying to talk and talk and talk. Mm -hmm. It's an actual physical thing. So now yep. if you go to RVH, you can actually see something that was built and developed because of your efforts. Mm -hmm. So what's it like to walk down that hallway or to be in that area? Um, I honestly don't really know. I have like mixed feelings, I guess. What are, what are your mixed feelings? Um, well, they're most, all of them are happy feelings. Like, yeah. um, I only feel grateful and then, um, like, it's really cool and stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then you probably get a little emotional sometimes, too, yeah. about it, right? Like, mm -hmm. I think it's, I think people need to understand that it's okay to get emotional about mm -hmm. something yeah. that you helped make. Mm -hmm. I know artists who will paint something really great mm -hmm. and they'll get emotional about their own painting. And sometimes people will achieve big things, just like you did. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's okay to just have a little tear of joy and mm -hmm. go, wow, I'm so 
happy. And those are the moments I don't think enough people have. Mm -hmm. So when you look back at this, you've got this incredible joy in your heart, mm -hmm. right? You've got this great soul for being out there doing this for people. Mm -hmm. If you were to thank anybody, who would be the first couple of people you would want to say thank you um, for getting you through this? The first person I probably think is Stu Garner. Oh yeah, Stu mm -hmm. Garner. Mm -hmm. He's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love Stu. Who um, else? And Sylvia. Okay. Um, Hmm. And what did they do to help? Um, well, Stu Garner just helped with us meeting new people, and he was a great friend along the way too. So he's we got, funny. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Sylvia helped us with all the planning and stuff. Yeah, she's organized. Mm -hmm. Cool. Who else? Uh, my mom. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, and not just because she loves you and because she's your mom and brought you yeah. into the world. And probably my stepdad because he biked with me for most of the way. Oh, did he? So how yeah. far did he travel with you? Um, like maybe. Probably about the whole way, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. That's very cool. Mm -hmm. That's really good for a stepdad to step in and do that. Yeah. Hey, stepdads, right? Mm -hmm. So, who else? Give me one more person. Um, and probably my dad. And your dad. Mm -hmm. And he's up in Collingwood. Yeah. Right? So your dad helped. That's awesome. Yeah. I'm glad that you have a family that helped you do this, too, because mm -hmm. some people try to do things, and the closest family are not even sometimes the actual biological family. Mm -hmm. You've got the, the best friends, like a Stu Garner and Sylvia, yeah. right? So. When you're sitting down now and you're chilling out, what is your favorite thing to do to just chill out? How do you turn your mind off of this? Um, I like to watch TV or like watch YouTube on my iPad yeah. or just play games. And what are you watching on YouTube? Um, I normally watch like, uh, you know, Logan Paul. I know Logan yeah, Paul. Yeah, I normally watch his videos. Do you? My kids watch Logan Paul. Mm -hmm. He makes me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you like Logan Paul? I don't know. He's kind of, he's funny and outgoing. Yeah. I guess, yeah. There you go. Mm -hmm. So you can live a little vicariously yeah. through him, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what else are you doing then for you? What, what is your happy place other than here? What do you feel uh, makes you really happy right now? Uh, I like my, um, uh, I don't really know. I just, anywhere is kind of okay, I guess. Well, I think that you're an awesome kid. Thank you. And I'm, and I'm not just blown away by you, because I've got kids and I try to get them off the couch sometimes mm -hmm. and they want to go to Bogdan or something and they're mm -hmm. done on the third run because it's tiring coming up the hill. Mm -hmm. Was there a point when you were doing all of this that you were like, I'm really tired? Uh, yeah, there's a day 12. It was all up hills. Yeah. And um, I actually kind of, I wanted to quit at that day. Um, yeah. And so when you're sitting there and you're wanting to throw in the towel, you're not throwing on Rocky music, you're not, you know, no. throwing on what, the eye of the tiger in your head, because that, that doesn't for everybody apparently. What was it, or who was it, that said, hey, let's talk, and said that it was okay to throw in the towel if you had to, or um, said, get up and let's go? Well, we were biking on, my stepdad helped me through with saying like, um, think of all the kids that you're helping and stuff like that. Yeah, kids who can't quit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's life or death for some of these kids, right? Mm -hmm. They can't quit. Yeah. So then you pedaled on. So it took, what, a couple of days of motivation? Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot more than a cat poster with a saying, right? This yeah. is This is your stepdad kicking in. <laughs> so what, what, what else did he say to you that kept you going into Zach mode? Um, well, on day 12, when we were ending, there was, uh, my mom told us that there's a Wild Wings at the end. So that kind of got me, that kind of got me to go faster. <laughs> There's bacon at the end. There's a Wild Wings at the end. That would mm -hmm. definitely inspire some people to finish. Yeah. So, Zach, I want to tell you on behalf of everybody that I can think of, including me, people who have battled depression, people who have battled so many different things, and those who have children or family who are doing these battles, mm -hmm. what you did was not only courageous and just awesome, it was with love. Mm -hmm. And so everybody that you've touched you probably don't know how wide that spectrum is of the people who you've touched. All want to say thank you. So thank you for all of that. Thank you for just being you and for taking your time today to meet with you. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Zach.